Hello, fellow and future game developers. My name is Anis and I've been making games for the last 10 years, both in the AAA and the indie scene. And I'm here to help you kickstart your career about indie game dev. In this video, I want to talk about five mistakes that I would avoid if I was to start making my game with Unreal Engine or actually with any, any other engine. A lot of these things actually have clicked in my mind like in the last couple years. So I hope that there will be something to learn for each and every one of you guys. Doesn't matter your level of experience. So yeah, let's just get started. The first thing, when you start making your first game or your first games, don't get caught up in all the fancy features. In the case of Unreal Engine, you can just see mega scans, meta humans, like all the AAA tools. Don't feel forced to use those shiny features. Like just focus on the game that you want to make and don't use anything else that is not going towards your design and, and your objectives. Another thing to keep in mind is if you make a game that looks AAA, if you start a game that looks like AAA, everything else in your game has to look and feel AAA. If your character like is hyper realistic and your environment is hyper realistic, then your sound effects and your VFX and then um, your, your voice acting, it doesn't make sense to have AAA looking characters and then just don't have voice acting in your game. Really focus on what you want to do and on what you want to make and don't get caught up in all the fancy and shiny stuff. My second advice is don't start with templates, uh, start from a base project from scratch, you can actually architecture your project the right way. A lot of the templates available in the marketplace will come with some kind of pre-made architecture that sometimes will not feel right for your game. You will spend a lot of time using a template and then you will understand that you actually don't like the way it's made and then you will just have to start from scratch. So my recommendation would be start with a base project, like the base templates, for example, in Unreal, like the base first person or the base third person, those come with a very limited uh, amount of features. And then if there's a template on the marketplace that has most of the features that you want, just pick things from there and bring them into your project. It can be a lot beneficial in the long run because you will learn more doing it this way. Again, I talk about scope creep every video, guys. It's the, the biggest challenge that, that you are going to face in your game dev career. Let's say you, get the, you want to make a survival game and you get like this crazy survival game kit from the marketplace and you feel like, all right, this is just has everything that I need and even more. Well, that's the problem. It has, even, it has more than, than what you need. A lot of those features you will want to keep in your game you will be like yeah okay it has this amazing interaction system and i can make all these puzzles and stuff but you did not have puzzles in your game before why would you make puzzles because the the, the template has puzzles so you may feel with with templates like all right these things are already developed so why not have them in my game but the base systems are developed like you will have to create the puzzles you will have to design them you will you will have to do a lot more than what the template offers. You don't have this global vision at, at first when you start making a game and you may feel like, all right, th these, these templates are just going to make my life so much easier, but in the long run, they may make it a lot more complicated than they may make your project a lot more complicated than your design a lot bigger. Have a clear idea of where you're going, start from a base project and then take things from the templates and take things from the assets available and bring them into your project step by step as your project evolves. The third thing is uh, kind of similar to templates, but avoid over downloading in the beginning. You may just like uh, start uh, working on this, uh, I don't know, survival game and you go on, on Sketchfab or you go on Mixamo and you're like, all right, I just want a movement animation from Mixamo. And then you go to Mixamo and then you find all these cool animations and you'd be like, all right, you know what? Since I'm here, I'm just gonna download everything, put everything in, in my project. And the same thing with art assets and the same thing with plugins. You will go exploring plugins on the on the marketplace and you will feel like, all right, yeah, I think I, think I need an interaction system and I think I need a sensing system for my enemies and I think I need the cool menu system and I will just bring all of this into my project and then I will I will learn how to use them and how to how to make a game with them. It's gonna just make your life more complicated. It's gonna bloat your project. It's gonna create a lot of errors that you will have to fix. So just avoid over downloading and bring in too many assets in your project at first. Just keep the base mannequin, keep the gray box when you're starting a project. Stick with that for as long as you can in order to make your gameplay fun, in order to make your gameplay feel good, your controller feel good, your enemy AI behave correctly. Build most of your systems and then go look at art and go look at assets and go look at how to make your game feel better because if your game is better with just the base mannequin and just the gray box it will feel 10 times better when you're actually bringing assets and art and vfx and all of that a lot of the time your design is going to evolve like we're we're not triple a studios here we're not like 100 people teams with with 10 designers like when we're making a game we just start with the basic design we craft a basic the game design document which by the way i really recommend that you spend time on when you're starting a project you will your design is going to evolve so much over the course of the game because sometimes you will have ideas you will execute them and they will not feel fun or not feel right or you will create some new things that will actually make some other systems that you've worked on obsolete 
So your design is going to evolve and sometimes even the art style and the universe of your game is going to evolve. Like, believe me, I started working on a post-apocalyptic zombie game that ended up being a sci-fi game in the end. So it can really evolve a lot. So avoid over-downloading uh, too many assets and uh, too many plugins. This way you will keep your project cleaner. You will be able to focus on the important things, which are gameplay, and you will avoid scope creep because those assets and those plugins will come with a lot of features that you don't need. So before we move on to the fourth step, I would like to introduce you guys to our sponsor for this video. Me, myself and I, as always. If you like this video, please give it a like. Please subscribe to the channel if you're getting value. Most importantly, please guys go wishlist Wars as well on Steam. It's the game I've been working on for over three years now and it's a game that we're working on with a team of 15 people right now. Very passionate, relentless people that are trying to deliver you guys a crazy multiplayer third person action roguelike and it would mean the world to us if you could actually give us a wishlist on steam and help us get some visibility it's it's very important especially now that like there are 1500 games releasing on steam every month like a bunch of asset flips so we really need to get like good quality wishlists so if you guys want to support me if you want to support the channel and the work we're doing please give us a wishlist it would mean the world all right so fourth step don't start a serious project without version control. If you don't know what version control is, it's basically a system that allows you to keep track of all the changes that you make in your project and that allows you to roll back to a previous version. So whenever you make a feature, you can just commit or push that feature to your version control system. And then if you break something in your project, you can go back on a specific file or on your entire project to a previous version. A free and uh, very, very well-known uh, version version control system is Git, but there are many others, Plastic, uh, Perforce, and, and more. So Git is very well integrated into Unreal. It's easy to use, and there are like plenty of freely available tools that you can use. Unreal Engine can sometimes corrupt assets, especially like renaming and redirectors and renaming your project, renaming files, and references can get lost. And sometimes you just may end up losing so much work if some of your assets get corrupt and it's so easy to roll back to a previous version if this happens. If you are starting a serious project, set up your version control system first and then keep working and then push often whenever you finish a feature, push that so that you can actually roll back if, if that becomes necessary. And the last tip is don't be a perfectionist when you start working on a game. Like, you know, there's a saying uh, very known in the software industry that is premature optimization is the root to all evil. And this is like even more important in the games industry than, than in the software industry because in games we can optimize and we can like try to make things perfect forever. Every game, even the best games that were ever released could be made better. Like you will always get an idea of how to make something better, but you have to constrain that feeling so that you can make progress on your game. So game dev is about iteration. When you're working on a system, you need to get it to a, to a state where it's working, then you need to move on to something else, and then you can come back to that system after that. Uh, if you try to make everything perfect, you may just end up making things that you will not need in the end, because some systems will be completely cut from your game, and some systems will just be removed. If you spend so much time on them, that's just that much time wasted. Iteration is the key. Uh, when you work on a system, once it's in, in a correct state, move on to the next system, and then when you come back to that other system that you were working on, you will have this external eye. It's gonna help you like figure out what you did wrong and what you did right. And it will help you like actually make that system better in relation to the other systems that you've made in the game. So don't be a perfectionist, get things to work, move on, make progress on your overall game, and then iterate on the systems every time, come back to the previous systems, try to make them better, try to clean them up, try to keep them well-maintained and well-architectured. This way you will not get burned out from a specific system and sometimes working on another system can actually give you an idea on how to make the other one better because you will learn new things about the engine, you will learn new uh, techniques, uh, you will learn new design patterns, you can learn a design pattern while working on the menus that can end up making your enemy system better for example. So uh, yeah, don't be a perfectionist and um, keep moving. It's the most important thing. Don't get caught up on a specific feature. Keep moving, keep progressing on your overall project and then keep iterating on all the parts of your project. This was Anas. I really hope that you got value out of this video. Please like and subscribe if that's the case. Please don't forget to wishlist Warden's Will on Steam. The link is in the description. It would help us immensely. It would help me, the channel, and the entire team behind it. And um, see you guys in the next video.